Well, welcome back to Tuts Plus. My name's Simon Plant, and today we're going to look at a brand new feature uh, in Photoshop CC, which is the perspective warp filter. Now, one of the great benefits to Photoshop CC and the whole subscription um, thing is that uh, we get a lot of features, new features in Photoshop, come and get a lot more regular rather than having to wait for a new upgrades. And uh, recently, um, a new one of the many new features that were announced was the perspective warp filter. Now, uh, this filter I think is going to be very, very useful. There is other ways of doing this similar thing uh, with lens distortion, etc. But this is very intuitive and very easy to quickly correct perspective in images. So today I'm going to show you a couple of uses uh, for the filter. Some are very obvious, some are less obvious. Now for me, uh, because I do a lot of compos compositing work, um, it's uh, sometimes useful um, to have a filter like this available. Now, whenever I plan my composites, like this one in front of us, they're all, everything is shot for that image. So I try and match all the perspective up to make sure I don't need to go in and try and uh, manipulate things to fit. So it's very rare these days that um, I need to uh, go into the perspective uh, and start altering things uh, but there is occasions so for instance if there's something I need to shoot uh, very very quickly and it's not available uh, I may have to either go to my archives and find something that's not quite shot in the same perspective or maybe it's just I need a stock image so this is why I'm quite excited that, that I've got this tool now available to help me when I need it uh, but I'm going to so going to show you how on a maybe on a simpler simpler level um, how this feels to might help you day in and day out. Now to access the filter, um, presuming that Photoshop is up to date, it's done all its updates, you should find uh, in Photoshop CC, you should find it under edit and then free trans uh, perspective warp, sorry. Now if it's greyed out like it is here, there's two reasons for that. One of the reasons could be that if you go to Photoshop and into Preferences and then go into uh, Performance, you'll then see a, a box down here called Advanced Settings uh, under the Graphics Processor Settings. If you go onto Advanced Settings, you need to make sure that this box is ticked, which is the Use Graphics Processor to Accelerate Computation. That's a mouthful. So you've got to make sure that one's ticked. If that's ticked and you're still not having any joy, you've got to make sure that your images are not in 16-bit mode. And it'll tell you up here, RGB 16. Uh, if it s says that, then it won't work in 16-bit, which I've obviously learnt this morning playing around with this filter. Uh, you need to make sure it's in 8-bit. So if it says 16, you go to go to Image, Mode, and then convert into an 8-bit per channel image and then you should be able to access perspective warp and you see now it's not greyed out it's ready for action so I'm going to show you some very simple ways to use this filter uh, and first of all we're going to go to edit and go down to our perspective uh, warp and now what we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to actually show or tell Photoshop uh, what shape our object is. Now I've got this product uh, I shot um, in a studio in front of me and it's it's fairly uh, fairly okay in terms of shape wise but I thought this would be a good uh, good way of showing you how this filter works. So we've brought this one up. So we've now got um, the tool uh, ready to go and the, you'll see at the top here we've got layout and warp. At the moment we're in layout mode and you, you'll see how this works in a second. I'm just going to just click and drag, and you'll see we get this like kind of a uh, box shape uh, come up over the image. Now this is what we're going to use to help define the shape, and we're literally going to use this grid to map out the shape of uh, the object. Now you'll notice in a minute this is just one uh, one uh, grid. We can add multiple grids, and I'm going to do that in a second. But first of all, I'm going to grab a corner, and I'm literally going to copy the shape of the side of this cage. Okay, the best I can. This is actually quite an easy one because we've got kind of straight lines in it. We can see what's going on. And it doesn't matter how big the grid is, you can bring it out a bit further if you need to. So there's my first grid. That looks pretty good. I'll just drag this down a little bit. So basically that's now telling Photoshop what shape this is, the side of this object is. But I want to also do concentrate on getting this shape on the front here as well. So I'm going to draw another box a little bit of a distance away from the first one. And there's a good reason for that. If we, uh, the closer we go to this uh, other box, it will 
try, and you'll get these obviously little tool tips coming up, which are, which are quite useful. But um, as we come closer to the other box, you'll see they turn blue, and uh, then they'll snap together. So if you want that, that's fine. If you don't want that for any reason, and I'm not sure why you wouldn't want that, then you need to keep the two boxes uh, away a little bit. Now, that's just changed the shape of that a little bit, so I'm just going to bring that across. And now we're going to get the front of this object mapped out. Bring that one in a little bit. And there we have it. Very quickly, very easily, we, we've mapped the shape of this uh, this uh, cage. Then I'm going to go up here and click on the warp button. And this is where we actually make the adjustments. Okay, you see these little uh, these little uh, control points have changed. Now, there's a couple of other options here. There's, uh, there's an upright, uh, uh, which will automatically try and uh, correct any vertical lines. If you click on that, it will try and just correct which it has done a little bit, correct the, the vertical lines in the image. And you can use this button to undo that. There's also another one here which will do the uh, horizontal lines. And earlier on, I had a bit of a problem with this because it uh, basically crushed my cage into two like that. So that one doesn't work very well, uh, at least on this image. Um, but you get the idea. It's worth trying these. There's also one here which will try and do both of those things. But again, in this instance, it's crushed the cage, uh, which is quite quite a quite a unique look, but not the one I'm looking for. Um, alternatively, we just go in and we can literally just uh, manipulate these by eye. And this is what I like about this filter. With the some of the other filters that uh, can do a similar thing, like Puppet Warp, it's quite difficult you know to do but with this filter it's quite intuitive and quite easy to quickly make adjustments and you can see we can do all sorts of things to this you can uh, really go to town if you want to uh, and change the way the object looks uh, and bear in mind do you think I haven't mentioned I've not this is not separated on a separate layer this object this is a uh, complete on the back on the background it's a single file um, and anything you got to watch obviously uh, if you manipulate things too much you will lose the edges, edges sorry of the, of the image you got to be a little bit careful I will undo that. The other thing you can do, if you hold down the shift key while hovering over one of the lines, like this upright, you'll notice it turns yellow. I'm just holding down the shift key now. If you click on that line, where it's uh, highlighted yellow, that is now going to be constrained. So everything else we do will uh, will move, but it, but it won't move that upright, which is quite uh, handy for uh, kind of freezing that, so that part of the image. So that's another tip. Uh, and then obviously we can click off it again. So that's the kind of basic use of the filter. Um, now with this next image, I've uh, gone into my archives and this is a very early composite that I attempted and it is a real mess, but uh, I'm glad to say uh, I've persevered and I've got much better at creating these types of images. Um, but I thought it was a good, good idea to show you how this filter could work um, in, in, in something like this um, and uh, the, maybe the way I would use it. So as I said, it's, it's a bit of a mess, so ignore the, the horrible masking. Um, but what I'm going to do, this is shot, uh, if I remember rightly, it was shot with quite a wide-angle lens. Now, let's say that I decided, um, oh, I wish I'd shot with a slightly longer lens and maybe, you know, compress this background a little bit more and had le less distortion on the road. Well, I can come in now, um, and what we can do, we can either turn this into a smart object or I can just duplicate it. I'm just going to duplicate it just for speed-wise today. I'm going to go to Edit. I'm going to go to Perspective Warp. I'm going to draw our grid across the image here. And I'm going to line this grid up with the road, like so, best I can. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to go into Warp. And I basically just want to enlarge the back of the road here to uh, maybe make that a little bit bigger in shot. And that should uh, also uh, stop the road from uh, sort of tailing off quite as quickly. So I'm going to bring this down quite a bit, like so. Press Enter, and then we can have a look at the before and after on that. So there's before, there's after. So it's just widened the back of the road up a little bit. So it doesn't kind of uh, distort quite so much. Um, so that's stage one. I then can turn on my car. I'm going to duplicate this as well. Command or Control J to duplicate. And I'll turn that one off a minute. Um, and I can do the same with this. Uh, the car, it's a little bit of a funny angle. It's a bit distorted. So a little bit more tricky. It goes to Edit, Perspective Warp. I'm going to draw two grids on this one. I'm going to draw one 
for the front of the car. And this is going to be a little bit more tricky because it's a bit of a, uh, a there's not really a straight edge as such. So I'm going to use the bumper on this image to try and line up the best I can. So there's my first adjustment, and then uh, the same with the top one. That looks about as good as I'm going to get it. And then I'm going to come across and draw another grid. And then what I said earlier, if they turn blue, they're going to snap together, which is fine. So I'm just going to drag that out and let go. Uh, and then I'm going to adjust this one and try and line it the best I can with the bottom of the car. And uh, with the top of the car as well. So you can see there's quite a bit of distortion on this. I'm just going to drag this out a little bit. And I think that's probably about right and uh, gonna go over to warp and again I can now try and match the car to the background a bit better I think that's got to come down a bit to avoid the distortion and maybe this needs to come up a little bit like so and I think that's about right click enter and that's now finished there's before and there's that. So you can see we've we've kind of uh, corrected the, the distortion of the car quite a bit. Um, obviously, it is only to show you for illustration purposes. It's not uh, not a very good image uh, anyway. But you can see very quickly we've corrected the uh, not kind of corrected the background or certainly changed the background to give it a, a what I think is a nice perspective um, and also uh, uh, change the car to try and match that so uh, just gives you a good overview of uh, what's possible and I certainly think that if um, if I was uh, again if for me if I'm making composite images and I had something to put into a background that wasn't the right uh, perspective uh, this filter as you can see uh, can very quickly help me uh, just manipulate the shape um, to fit uh, to fit the background so I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, go away go and have a play um, I'm sure you'll find it's a great tool it's not a tool maybe you use every day but it's uh, great to know it's there and I'm sure you'll find some creative uses uh, for it above and beyond what I've showed you today. Thanks for watching. Catch you soon. Cheers.